few tennis coaches have transcended social barriers, worked with generations of Atlanta's youth, tutored the area's power base, and left a legacy the city will feel for generations. But then again, there's only one Branch Currington. Branch made tennis in the black community what golf now is in the black community. He really showed people that this sport was not just about running and, and hitting, it was about strategy, it was about intelligence, it was about placement. And the very strengths that you had to learn to survive on the tennis court are the very strengths you have to have to survive in the workplace and to survive in life. So to many people, you know, it's just a game, but to Branch, it's a way of living. His contributions may not be in the lights, but it's etched in people's hearts, particularly my heart. Currington first picked up a racket in 1938. At the age of 13, in the height of segregation, he was hired to help with maintenance at the exclusive Piedmont Driving Club. Using discarded balls and old rackets, he would learn the game and eventually hone his craft with the help of two legendary players and teachers, Jack Waters and Welby Van Horn. Branch worked, you know, learned under both of them, learned how to teach under both of them, and uh, I think that's 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 how he gained all of his uh, his expertise and knowledge under those two great teachers. Well, Welby Van Horn was a very like a world class player, so the idea that you know, he was able to, you know, observe or learn under him is, that's tremendous, you know, especially for, you know, black tennis professional, which is, you know, he had to be one of the first, if not the first, so to speak. After serving in the Army during the Second World War, Currington returned to Atlanta and became the head court attendant at the Piedmont Driving Club. He also mentored a troop of young black ball boys and got the club's blessing to teach them how to play in his spare time. Many he mentored went on to play college tennis. One of his favorite quotes was, there's no such thing as a bad, a bad boy or a bad child. He never gave up. And he treated his son with that type of love and consideration. And so I think he made a difference. Under Van Horn, Currington later rose to the position of assistant teaching pro. But in the mid-1950s, when it became clear he had little future as a pro in the Deep South, he stepped away from the game, but he was never forgotten. In 1964, then Atlanta Mayor Ivan Allen, who knew Currington from his time at the driving club, offered him an opportunity. He could now run the new Washington Park Tennis Center, a facility that would attract notable players and tournaments. When Branch left um, the driving club, I think it, it was in an era of still there was segregation, and you know, and for he knew how good he was, I think, in tennis, and but but it just wasn't happening. And so he, he got out of tennis, and we were very fortunate that when Washington Park opened up and uh, people remembered him and brought him back there, that I think it was very fortunate for so many people that that happened. Currington quickly built a junior program, encouraging children from all backgrounds to learn the game. Tennis was kind of lifted up in the community, because tennis wasn't the most popular thing in the black community. Football, basketball, baseball, those things were, were kind of number one. So. Uh, when he came into the community, he gave us that. I know more kids have gone to college who might not have been able to go to college because of Branch, because he not only introduced them to the sport, but he introduced them to clean living. He introduced them to another way of life. He introduced them to honest to goodness caring and commitment. He invested in children in that community so that they in turn became independent versus them becoming dependent, which is what would have happened if Branch had not been there. The junior program quickly fostered a safe haven for the city's youth, and it was a life changer for many of Atlanta's underprivileged kids. I heard him say something back in the day, and I don't know if I would agree with it today. He said there's no such thing as a bad kid. <laughs> You know, but uh, he always felt that he could straighten out anybody. When I first met him, I literally was only trying to steal a tennis ball from him. And I used to go to YMCA, and I saw the courts across the park, Washington Park, and I went over there and I said, oh, this guy's up here teaching tennis. I just want a tennis ball. That's all I want. So I would stand in a corner, 
wanted to reach under the net and take a ball and go. And he said, hey, come on in here. And I said, what? He says, oh, if you pick up these balls, I'll give you an ice cream cone. And I said, yeah, okay, that's a good deal. And then I would go back to the YMCA, come back the next day, pick up the balls, get an ice cream cone, go back to the YMCA, come back the next day, and then instead of an ice cream cone, he stuck a tennis racket in my hand. And I started, instead of going to the Y, I started going to the tennis center every day. And we would open that tennis center, we would close that tennis center. Currington made relationships with many local universities, even rising to the head coach status at Clark College. That would lead to excitement around the game and bring others to the sport. Soon, Currington would be considered one of the best teaching pros in the area, and Atlanta took notice. Well, I got elected to Congress in uh, 1972 when I was 40 years old. And um, Secretary of Treasury, uh, George Schultz, invited me to go to an international bank meeting. And um, everybody else in the staff had tennis rackets. And they went out to play tennis in the morning early. And um, when they came back, they told me all that had been decided. And I said, good gracious, if they're going to make the decisions on the tennis court, I better learn how to play tennis. So I, I bought an Arthur Ashe racket, and I came back to Washington Park and met Branch Carrington. The tennis boom hit in the 1970s. Washington Park became a beacon for tournaments and leagues. This would continue for decades, making Atlanta a mecca for competitive tennis, a legacy that had a lot to do with the city's the finest city moment. Atlanta. That was one of the things that impressed the Russian delegates when they came here to look for the Olympics. Ordinary people could come into our tennis blocks and you didn't have to you know, their view of capitalism, that only the very, very rich can play golf and tennis. But here in Atlanta, uh, it was part of our public life. It was part of our social life. It was a part of our business life. And it's one of the same things that made this city a success. And they had about 16 votes uh, out of 85. But that was, the way we, that was the way we brought the Olympics. But we didn't do anything special. We showed them the city as it was, and people really fell in love. So at the age of 90, it's time that Branch Currington takes his seat with the rest of Georgia's tennis elite. For our community, uh, and for Branch, and for his family and friends, it's, it's very significant. He is an amazing man in more ways than one. I am just really happy for him. And I'm happy because so many people die and they never know how they were valued by other people. Branch now knows how he's valued, why he's important, and why, quote, we love him. Congratulations to Branch Currington, a 2016 inductee into the Georgia Tennis Hall of Fame.